Hi everybody, it's Jeremy, the Existential Wine Guy, and I'm here every Wine Wednesday to, you know, talk about wine, uh, to uh, wax philosophical, and also to answer your questions. Uh, although one of the questions I get is, hey Jeremy, uh, what do you do? What is your connection to wine? Uh, and because my website is just awful, I thought I might just tell you. Uh, I am a wine industry veteran. I have worked in uh, many wineries, uh, both just behind the counter as an associate, uh, tasting wine, everything from tours to now training, and I've managed wineries and also done marketing, so kind of the full gamut. Uh, so right now, if you go to Existential Wine Guy, you'll know that uh, I do private trainings for wineries. I do uh, private tastings for groups, uh, corporations, even small in-house type stuff I've done. Uh, everything from public speaking to actually writing about wine. So uh, that's kind of catching you up on what I do. And you can always check me out at existentialwineguy.com and find out more or contact me through that uh, website. And uh, maybe we can work together in the future. Uh, as I've been doing doing this now for, oh gosh, right now, about a month now, I've gotten some just fantastic questions that uh, I've way too many that I can address uh, anytime soon. However, there was one that came across from uh, one of my favorite people about Town Deb, and if you're not following her on Facebook and Instagram, you really should. Uh, about Town Deb is uh, one of the co-founders and uh, one of the business partners of the magazine Bliss Babes. And Bliss Babes is exactly what you think it is. It is a high and uh, lifestyle magazine directly toward you know geared towards women obviously I am not their target audience. Uh, however, after I got a chance to meet Deb, uh, I went through and I started checking out the magazine. And for all the stuff that maybe doesn't apply to me, one thing they do an amazing job of is talking about wine, wine areas, different wineries to go to, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, so if you get a chance, uh, pick up the magazine, uh, Bliss Babes, but definitely follow uh, Deb uh, about, again, about down, about town Deb. You will find her, uh, oh gosh, all over Facebook, uh, Instagram, and one of the things that she has, she has a, so much energy. She's all over the place. I don't even know, I don't have time in the day to get to do half the stuff that she does, but she's always doing something to promote the community and the wine regions in this area. Uh, again, I'm Jeremy, the Existential Wine Guy. I'm coming to you live from Sacramento, California, uh, just right in the middle, dab in the middle of all sorts of amazing uh, wine areas, including Napa, Sonoma, Lodi, the Sierra foothills, including Lodi and El Dorado and Placer counties. There's just some phenomenal wine Wine being made in all of these regions, and I'm lucky enough just to be right in the middle of it. Uh, I'm going to start off with Deb's question, and it was kind of funny. It was sent to me actually a couple of weeks ago, and it's basically, why do some wines make you sneeze? And I thought that that was kind of funny. I never really had the experience where wine was making me sneeze or congested or anything like that. Uh, so I started doing a little bit of research, and I found out, oh yeah, there's a really good reason uh, why some wines might affect you in such a way that you feel like uh, you have allergies or a cold coming on. And specifically, um, as my title says, the hysterical histamine, it is absolutely wine, uh, especially red wine, has histamines in uh, in the wine that can have an adverse reaction to you if you if your body isn't ready for it. So uh, the first thing we need to figure out is you know what is a histamine, and a histamine is actually something your body creates when it feels like it's being attacked by something like pollen or something that would give you an allergic reaction. So one of those kind of interesting things about that is when you have like an allergic reaction, uh, like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, freshly cro uh, mowed grass or something like that, um, your body starts to well up and you start to, um, histamines get formed in your body and start doing everything it can to expel those particulates. So what do you want is, uh, what happens is you start sneezing and you start coughing and your eyes start running. And it's curious that, yeah, there are a lot of people out there that have that same effect with wine. And by a lot of people. I just read a, uh, a study where the, in 2007 they kind of figured that about maybe one percent of the population has a sort of uh, uh, an, an allergy, a uh, specific allergy to histamines or their what they called uh, in, uh, histamine uh, intolerant. 
So what happens is, uh, if, especially when you're drinking wine, especially red wine, um, what will happen is as you're drinking it, there's a lot of histamines in the wine. And if, you are body, if your body is already sort of maybe fighting a cold or dealing with allergies, uh, more histamines get introduced into your body. When those histamines get introduced to your body, again, they start doing all those things that make uh, your body think it's being attacked by some sort of allergen out there. Um, so you start getting the sneezing and the coughing and all of that type of stuff. There's also uh, a, a um, part of your body, uh, uh, an ingredient, you know, uh, something that your body produces, and I'm going to read this because I know I'm just going to screw this up. And it is called uh, diamine oxidase. Diamine oxidase. Basically, when the histamines get um, produced in your body and they start producing all the uh, the slime and the sneezing and stuff like that, your body has to have something in it to regulate it, kind of a natural antihistamine. And it's that. Actually, the nickname of it or the, the initials of it is DAO. And when the DAO gets produced, what happens is it actually uh, lessens and it removes the histamines from your body. So if you are actually... Um, drinking a, a, a lot of red wine and you get all those histamines in there, uh, there may not be enough um, DAO in your body to reduce the content of the histamines and that's why you start getting all flustered and all sort of crazy that way. Uh, it's a really good question and uh, I was kind of surprised uh, that I really hadn't heard too much about that before. I have felt like every once in a while, like if I drink something, uh, maybe, you know, your nose, uh, your eyes water up a little bit or something like that. But I really haven't had the full-fledged uh, attack, if you will, of like having an allergy attack. Now, like I was saying before, there is about 1% of the population that this absolutely affects that you have... Um, a DAO a deficiency in your body. So when you have allergies, whatever they may be, and it could be, in a, you know, like a, it could be anything. Uh, the list goes on. It, it's not just wine. It's anything that's high in histamines, and from that you can have things like chocolate and strawberries. And there's, a, there's a, you can go online and sort of check those out. But all those things can absolutely affect what's happening uh, it, uh, can affect the histamine levels in your body. And if the DAO, if there isn't enough of it to sort of counteract that, like that natural antihistamine, uh, it, it can really affect you and you can stay on there. It can stay in your body for a really long time. So uh, if you are the type of person that feels this coming on a lot or more than regularly, regularly you should definitely uh, check it out. It's also... Uh, you know, it can be also an inflammation issue, and you can have other issues with your body that affect uh, the low levels of DAO in your system, and therefore affecting the things that you eat, you know, or be, you can be more susceptible, I should say, to the things that you eat and you drink. Now, uh, and seriously, the, there's a very, very small amount of the population that, you know, like I said, uh, you know, 1% or even under that this actually affects. So if you are, if this is something that's happening regularly to you while you're drinking wine, absolutely go to the doctor and check it out. Uh, uh, what you could do to sort of counteract that while it's going on, certainly, uh, and you, like, I'm no doctor, so please don't sue me, but you could definitely uh, take an antihistamine uh, and that should should help uh, reduce the effects uh, if you ever have that. The other thing you can do is uh, red wine has anywhere from 20 to 200 times more histamines than white wine. So you can always just switch over to white wine if you're actually having you know, that sort of physical effect. Again, if you're just joining me, thank you. My name is Jeremy. I'm the Existential Wine Guy. And on Wine Wednesdays, I'm answering questions and waxing philosophical about uh, wine and sort of the community of wine and you know, the things that wine makes me do, uh, which is mostly drink it. So uh, today I am drinking, uh, and I'm, again, my French is absolutely horrible for someone who loves wine, but uh, Le Ho, Le Ho? Yeah, Le Haute de la Garde. Uh, this is a 100% organic wine out of France. Uh, just opened it up. I just kind of took a chance on this. It was a, It's absolutely fantastic. And like I've mentioned in previous uh, broadcasts before, I am starting to be more of a fan of wines that have a slightly lower alcohol uh, rate. And this one has about 13%. It is a blend of... Um, 
uh, let's see, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc, which is just, you know, a Bordeaux blend that you absolutely cannot go wrong with. So uh, if you have any questions for me uh, that we can answer right here and now, I would love to uh, attack them. I see that Laura has joined. Michael Litza, thank you. Uh, it's always good to see you there. Drew, uh, another guy that you should be checking out on Instagram. He is a, to call him a bartender, we do him a disservice. Uh, he, this guy is a, a mixologist. He does absolutely fantastic stuff. And his Instagram is absolutely beautiful. So definitely go check him out. And then, of course, Amber Marin Lawrence is on there. Uh, uh, Nutrition by Amber is her website, and you should definitely be checking that out as well. If Amber, you're still watching, if I didn't get that at website right, um, you know, let me know. Also, she's a fantastic sister, so, you know, she's a good girl to have around. Um, again, uh, a Bordeaux blend, you can just really almost never go wrong. As we get more into uh, more of the philosophical things that, you know, the things that I like to talk about, uh, I, I, I want to go over a quote that everybody in the wine industry has heard this one, and it's uh, yeah, by Galileo Galilei. Wine is sunlight held together by water. The poetry of that line itself just sort of knocks me out a lot. But more than that, I, I think it's interesting that wine especially uh, puts me into, I don't know, it makes me think more metaphorically. And I also notice that when I'm drinking with a bunch of friends, uh, we're sharing a bottle of wine and a meal, uh, we just tend to speak uh, on things of a higher level. And I'm really curious if anyone out there has, uh, has had the same uh, observation or if there's anyone out there uh, who can think of those type of conversations. If anything comes to mind, I'd love to hear about those as well. I'm going to wipe off a notification so I can actually look at the people who